Thank you for inviting us uh, tonight to talk about your new student union building. We're very excited about this project. I'm Roger Hughes. This is uh, Alan Endall, my co-partner in charge, Craig Lane, our project coordinator, and Daryl Johnson, our uh, stadium and recreation designer. Uh, tonight, we would uh, like to uh, talk to you about uh, your project, but we'd also like to give you some information about our firm. We'd like to talk a little bit about uh, our team and how it's made up and who will be responsible for doing what with you. Uh, we'll also talk about the vision for your project and how it will integrate with the stadium and the recreation uh, facility in your campus. Uh, and then we'll talk about the benefit of the project. But we'd also like to show you a little video at the end, which I think you'll be interested in. <clears throat> uh, our firm uh, operates out of a, a studio type atmosphere because we believe in collaboration. We think collaboration is the secret to great architecture and in an open studio, uh, it enhances collaboration, but also uh, enhances creativity. Our work is mostly um, community-based work uh, with a sustainability uh, design criteria uh, foundation. Uh, we're about 50 people and we have two offices, one in Vancouver and one in Victoria. We're essentially a local firm. Uh, some of our work includes uh, a lot of uh, post-secondary work. This is the uh, pharmacy building at UBC, which was just recently completed. Uh, Craig Lane was the uh, project architect and I was the partner in charge of it. It has a very interesting student commons, which is the centerpiece of the project. And it is, the student commons is right off the entrance. It's also lit from, the, uh, from above with two atrium spaces. And the atrium spaces connect up to the, uh, the uh, laboratories and the classrooms. We also won the competition for the uh, master plan of the, the University Boulevard at UBC. And this project also included locating the new student union building at UBC. It also included the massing and the program of the building. However, we were not the architects uh, for the building. A lot of our work is recreation work recreation and sport work. This is the West Van Community Center, and it includes a lot of uh, gymnasiums <coughs> uh, and a, a, an aquatic center, as well as a lot of multi-purpose rooms. We also did the, uh, the 5,000 seat uh, uh, venue for the curling at the uh, 2010 Olympics. And this is at, the, uh, at Hillcrest Park in Vancouver. And the interesting thing about this project is it was converted after the Olympics to uh, a community center. And this just shows the gym, as well as the main concourse. And the interesting thing about the concourse is that you can see into the program spaces. So the concourse has actually become a very interesting area, a very vibrant area. We recently won two competitions for sports venues <clears throat> in Montreal. This is a soccer stadium, indoor soccer stadium, with an outdoor soccer stadium attached. And this is a community center with a sports hall for the Alouettes, which is a separate project in Ville Saint Laurent. This is the, uh, the stadium uh, for rugby in University of Victoria, which uh, Daryl is currently designing. And this is a stadium in Ottawa, which Daryl designed was with uh, con uh, Canon Architecture, Canon Design, and a stadium in Portland, Oregon, which he also designed when he's with Canon. So you can see our, we have relevant experience for stadiums and university work. Much of our community work involves things like libraries. This is a library in uh, Edmonton, which is just about to open. Library in Victoria, or uh, Vancouver, Renfrew Library. We also did the library at Whistler, which was a lead gold uh, building. This is the entry to the library at Whistler. I don't know if any of you have been up to Whistler to see this building. It's been very well received by the uh, community. Much of our work, uh, is lead oriented. All of our work is sustainable. This is a high school in Prince George, which uh, Craig was the project architect on, and it is a lead gold project. However, we like to go beyond lead, and this is the University Child Care Project here on the mountain, and it is a living building project, so it goes beyond lead. Hi there. So before I give a little bit of background on Endall Elliott Associates, uh, I just want to make a few uh, comments about our collaboration with HCMA. 
about three, three or four years ago, uh, we worked together with HCMA on uh, the SFU Burnaby Mountain Transit Hub project. And we found that collaboration worked really well. We worked really well together. We have complementary uh, skill sets. And as Roger mentioned earlier in, in uh, his comments, uh, we, we both have a strong belief in the merits of uh, collaboration. So when this project opportunity, when your project opportunity uh, came up, uh, it was kind of a, a natural that we would team together on this project. So in addition to the Transit Hub uh, study, uh, Endall Elliott has done a number of urban design and planning stu studies on the SFU campus over the last eight or nine years, including the 2010 campus plan development uh, plan update, which included uh, form of development guidelines for all of the remaining development sites on the, the campus. So we're very familiar with the SFU campus. And uh, most recently, uh, we were, about this time last year, we were retained to prepare the, what we refer to as the referendum concept design and presentation uh, for your project uh, and the new student union building. So Endall Elliott, uh, we're uh, a relatively small uh, design firm located in, in Vancouver. Uh, but as a small firm, we're really proud of the fact that uh, over the last nine or 10 years, we've been really successful in securing and successfully completing a number of very large, complex projects, um, kind of punching above our weight class in many respects in terms of the, the size and complexity of projects. These are, it includes projects like the new downtown YMCA and residential project on Burrard Street uh, in Vancouver, uh, as well as uh, about 10 years ago, my partner and I were uh, responsible for the SFU WAS Center for Dialogue across the street from the Harbor Center campus. And most recently, just completed last year, it, uh, we were uh, responsible for the redevelopment of the Hotel Georgia site in Vancouver. So I, I guess to summarize, uh, given our uh, familiarity with the SFU campus, uh, our familiarity with the history of, of your project, and our interest in, in large complex projects, uh, we're, we're thrilled to, to have this opportunity to be here tonight to talk about your project. So. so now you've seen a little bit of the projects that the firms have uh, put out there. Some of them I'm sure you've gone out to see. There's some great stuff. Uh, and we invite you to actually go and see them. I mean, they perform incredibly well when you walk through the spaces. Um, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the team, uh, about uh, who's actually going to be, would be working on the project. Of course, there's Roger and Alan, who would be the people, the, the reps that would be speaking to the students. Um, I'll be a uh, project architect, and then our roles will be constants throughout the uh, project. Daryl will be uh, stadium and rec, uh, he's a specialist and uh, the designer of it, uh, and when the issues come up about those, that particular part of the project, because that's no small part of the project, he'll be uh, directly involved the whole way through. Um, I'll just tell you a little bit about our, uh, our studio. We're uh, going to have a dedicated space for the, uh, the project. We'll have all the people uh, in that space as sort of a hothouse, really, of uh, ideas and creativity. And I guess it's a little bit of a mess. Um, but design is a messy process, really, uh, full of false starts and experiments and revisions and more revisions. And really what comes out of that is, is the strong ideas really survive. And that's what we really want to deliver to you guys. Uh, supplementing us will be uh, other people from our firm. There'll be two collaborating partners, uh, Karen and Malcolm. Hopefully I've got a long enough cord. Uh, Kourash, our sustainability expert, and Karen and Kourash are responsible for the SFU childcare. I don't know if you guys have been up there. Um, it is uh, a living building challenge, or it's uh, slated for it. It's still going through the paperwork. Uh, supplementing them will be some designers that we have. Uh, Craig, Rachel, Nathan, Paul. I think it will be a really strong team. I mean, they've, they've worked on some great stuff in the office, some of the stuff that you've seen tonight. Um, so, the, we're, but our group really is just part of a, a much bigger group, which really involves all of you. And uh, we need your input, really, to, be, to make this thing a success, to make it unique and special. And there's a kind of a two-step methodology that we're thinking about. One is uh, 
the more traditional aspect of meeting face to face through workshops where we gather information and charrettes where we give shape to information and uh, open houses and modeling sessions. And uh, I mean, basically, when you put people in a room, I mean, like Arcade Fire doing uh, Neon Bible in an elevator, I mean, sometimes magic happens. It's, it can be incredible. The second step in our, the, the method that we'll be using to kind of make sure that there's a smooth communication and uh, an interface between us will be uh, liaising with the think tank. I think that the think tank is, it's an incredible uh, venue that you guys have created to you know, get this information out to a wider audience. Um, and uh, our commendations to the people responsible for it, really. So what we will do is take the output from the face-to-face -face meetings We'll assemble that, collate it, coordinate it. We'll derive content out of that, and we'll deliver it to the think tank. We, uh, that, that, uh, that content that we deliver will be in two forms. It'll be the physical, like models and drawings, like you can see in this open house here, uh, for display in the space, and also digital information um, that can get posted. We'll provide text, we'll provide images, uh, whatever we really need to convey the information. And uh, what I want to say about that is that the content that gets delivered to the think tank is really th there to inspire you, to get your imagination going. That, as I say, this is really about you guys and getting the information from you, getting your ideas. And that's what's really going to do, do incredible things here. So the diagram here shows the two sides, the face-to-face, us delivering the, uh, the content to the think tank where we want to get feedback from you guys. We, we certainly welcome you. We really encourage you to be a part of that. And then that information, that feedback, that is, uh, again, assembled, collated, and fed back into more face-to-face -face sessions so that what we want to do is create a feedback loop so that the, it just keeps getting stronger and stronger. That, that kind of feedback will take uh, many forms and we'll be dealing with many issues uh, such as site selection and programming. And Alan wants to talk a little bit about programming. Okay, so one of, one of the first things we're going to want to start working you with is this discussion about what goes into the new student union building. So what do we know so far? We, we know that the preferred site has been identified as the site of the Lauren Davies complex just to the immediate south of uh, main uh, campus access next to the uh, transportation center. Uh, we know that there's probably going to be about 120,000 square feet of space that goes uh, into into uh, uh, onto that site. Uh, we also know that there's a need for a 2,500 seat stadium immediately to the south overlooking Terry Fox Field uh, that will have access to concessions, washrooms, etc. And we also know that there's uh, about 50,000 square feet of space in the lower two levels uh, below the central gym that uh, uh, would uh, want to be renovated to accommodate new washrooms, showers, etc., uh, and uh, be connected to uh, recreation and athletics uh, facilities to the west. So, uh, so we we have those three major big pieces, the major components of the project. Uh, one of the advantages of this site we see is, is its very location. It's, it's situated very prominently, and, it's, and in, in our terminology, it's, it's kind of like right at the front door of campus. This is where the main arrival point to campus is, so it also provides uh, a strong front door to the new uh, sub-building uh, and stadium complex. It's got lots of accessibility from all the circulation walkways uh, immediately to the north along the access. And in addition, uh, so we can expect that, um, that people are, are really going to be able to move through the, the Student Union in building. So it's not only a destination, but it's a place people will move through in order to gain access to recreation and athletics and to the stadium. So in many ways, the Student Union building itself becomes a front door to those facilities. And it sets up this, this situation where there's kind of like a crossroads kind of uh, circulation pattern happening within the, the Student Union building that sets up this op opportunity for a real community place, a real gathering place. So how do we get at what goes into the building? Um, 
first of all, we know that there's going to be multi-purpose spaces, rotunda spaces, uh, retail services, food and beverage, office spaces, in meeting spaces, uh, clubs, lots of uh, lounge spaces, study spaces, et cetera, et cetera. And, and you get the picture. There's going to be a lot of things that we're uh, going to be working with you to try and identify exactly what the functional program for this facility uh, will be so that we can in turn start to develop a vision for your facility that answers uh, your needs. And we'll be doing that on an ongoing basis using that uh, con uh, continuous feedback process that Craig des described earlier. So now we want to get into a bit of a uh, discussion about the vision. And uh, so this is this is where it, it starts to get exciting and uh, this is where we want to start talking with you about what the experience of the new uh, sub-building will be and what it's going to feel like and look like. So here's a short list of some of the con uh, issues that we think uh, we'll, we're going to start to consider in our uh, conversation with you. So we're going to ask you to try and imagine what it's like as you uh, approach this building and, and what the experience uh, of the building is going to be when you actually enter it. What is the sense of arrival and how uh, do we develop uh, this space so it, it feels welcoming and, and warm and, and invites you into the building? The interesting thing about the entry, of course, is what's beyond the entry. Do you go into an atrium? Is it a student commons? Is it the crossroads? So it's a very important part of the design of the entry itself, is what's beyond the entry and why. And those will be the kinds of questions we'll be asking you when we work with you. We're also going to want to talk about how do we maximize and optimize connections to the uh, existing circulation patterns around the, the site and really uh, uh, help develop the uh, optimized traffic and animation through the, the building. And of course, connections are both uh, vertical as well as horizontal. In the pharmacy building, a lot of the vertical connections were expressed across the atrium so that when you're on the ground floor, you can see people going from one side to the other and you can see how you can get from one side to the other and how you get from one part of the building to the other. Transparency is a very important part of this project, we feel, because it's through this device that we can open up the student union building and you can see what's going on. People can see what's going on and understand how it's functioning and how you understand how you can participate. We found in recreation projects that the spaces between the program have actually become as important as the program spaces. At Hillcrest, people are uh, sitting there watching, uh, watching a hockey game at the same time they're on their computer uh, on the Wi-Fi that's provided by the library in the, in the facility. And we're anticipating a wide variety and types of spaces that uh, will be accommodated in the new building. Uh, and so uh, one of the things uh, we'll need to address is how do we unify all those spaces and still uh, get a common sense of place uh, to, uh, to the new building? Sunlight's going to be very important in your building. Daylighting. What's the building like at night? How do you see in it? I think of it as an all-weather building, an all-day building. I think that the building must be comfortable and welcoming when there's snow outside, when there's fog outside, like tonight, when it's raining, not just when it's good weather. So the building has to take all those climate conditions into consideration. And we, we also need to think about uh, the, the different seasons and everything when it comes to the outdoor spaces, because with relatively li little effort, we can extend the, the time usage of, of uh, outdoor spaces uh, into the fall and earlier in the spring when the weather's not so great by simple measures of uh, adding weather protection or introducing some heaters or maybe a, even a fire pit. So uh, I, I, we can't disregard the importance of the, the outdoor spaces. A roof garden. <laughs> <laughs> so well, Another important thing is, is how do we start to arrange all this wide range of spaces and everything within the space in order to get that sense of place and optimize uh, the connections to the stadium and, and recreation and athletics. So it's about integrating space and circulation routes. This is an interesting uh, slide because it shows how the transparency uh, from the gym to the student commons really begins to open the space up but also integrate uh, the, uh, the different functions and people understand what's going on in the building. And we can open things up, make it transparent so that we can connect 
uh, spaces vertically and horizontally in order to admit additional light, more light into the building, and, and really feel as though the, all the spaces are, are integrated and working together. There will be, as I mentioned earlier, a wide variety of spaces, but we also want to uh, be careful ab about developing spaces that have multi-uses and multi-purposes so that we minimize the amount of dedicated space so that we can enhance the usage of the building by uh, 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 creating spaces that will accommodate different functions. And we want to create and talk about spaces to uh, relax, uh, spaces to study, spaces to meet, and spaces to eat. So, really important aspect is, is how do we optimize that connection to the stadium and recreation and athletics and really feel that there's a seamless integration between those facilities and the student union building. Obviously, flexibility is a very important part of the design in order to do exactly what Alan was just saying. Here in West Van, we uh, created open, open doors on either side of the public atrium and uh, so the space goes from the, uh, the Marine Drive side all the way through to the Mountain Courtyard side. When the facility opened, we had 3,000 people indoors and outdoors on this, uh, in this particular facility, just using that uh, device to create the flexibility here. Materials and color, very important thing. Uh, a lot of people prefer, prefer uh, warm, natural materials and a sense of welcoming, but there is also uh, a, a chance here to maybe d develop a more contemporary expression and uh, uh, move towards a more vibrant color palette. Um, so there's, there's different directions that we can go in, in order, and, and we want to hear from you exactly what uh, that sense uh, of, of space is. And there's opportunities to integrate art. Uh, here's a, an example of how uh, silkscreen solar shading on the West Van Aquatic Center has been introduced to not only perform a, a, f a function in, in uh, solar sun control, but also to uh, give a, an artistic, colorful impression on the inside of the building. There's also huge opportunities to integrate light and furniture and have that, uh, again, as functional uh, art pieces within the, the building. As Alan said, these are just some of the considerations that we'll be discussing with you that will inform the design. What's important to consider though is because of your unique concept, it's a unique project, that when we put all this together into a design, we want to create a, an architecture with authenticity. It's your building, there's nothing else like it. It should have an authenticity that will resonate and, and last and wear well into the future. I think that the, uh, go ahead. The benefits are obvious to the project. I mean, finally, this is a space designed for you, specifically for you, that will integrate with the athletics and stadium spaces on campus, creating a real enhancement of your campus community. We're very excited about this project. This is a really important project for us. It will prove, I think, how design really can work, how design can really count. For a long time, I think, educators and architects have been thinking what happens outside the classroom is as important as what happens in the classroom. I think this project will show that, uh, and, but it's really because I think we've, we've entered into another age. We've entered into the digital age. This really couldn't happen before computers in the digital age. Now that we're there, we think that this project, like many other projects across North American campus, will be a transforming project for Simon Fraser, and your project is the seed project for this for this pro for this uh, this time in in the history of Simon Fraser? Um, we're going to show you a short video now. Can I can I just say something about that video? You can say something about the video. <laughs> okay, I just want to tell you a little bit about this video. This video was made about three days after the pharmacy building opened up, and uh, we had nothing to do with it. We had no idea that it was being made. That uh, it came as a complete surprise to us when somebody emailed us the link. And, uh, sorry, I spent three years working on the building. And for me, it's very He's emotional. He's choking up. He's choking <laughs> up. <laughs> that the students love it so much.
Okay, that's, that's a good question, and, and we will have a, a professional structural engineer on the, on the team, of course. And you'll notice uh, we have achieved transparency in many of our projects while achieving the, the structural integrity necessary for those buildings. So it is possible, and, uh, and we have done it. So I think we can, we can do it in your building. I mean, the real question is, is what you think should be transparent, what should be open, and what should be closed? And those are discussions, again, that we would have with you in the process. Yes, very much. So the, the question is, is uh, we, we showed some uh, glimpses of the video clip of the what I'd refer to as a referendum concept design. And uh, from our perspective, that was, that was kind of like a, a, a very quick hit at looking at what the opportunities for that site were. And we're, we're starting afresh. With, uh, that's, uh, we're starting at, at, at the first base. We want to you know, involve everyone in the process, all the stakeholders, and it's a, it's a blank slate at this point. So please don't misinterpret those images as anything that we're wed to. But it has given us some pretty good experience about what a student union building could be. Excellent question. I think, uh, again, it has to be an open and welcoming place. And maybe you can connect to the downtown campus electronically, so you could have, um, you could have uh, videos or whatever, or, or monitors in your downtown campus showing what's going on in your student union building. Also, I think your events in your student union building have to be well advertised in your other campuses, so people know what's going on. Any more questions, comments? So we're, well, the video's over, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, this is a, a poster that was done sometime in the 70s, and it just shows uh, your project as the engine that's driving the spaceship Simon Fraser into the future. So I thought it was an interesting metaphor. <laughs> One more question. Another question. I'm not sure we understand what, what you mean by professional requirements. Um, I mean, for example, the lead requirement would, re would require... Lead? Oh. Do you mean lead sustainability design, perhaps? Or yes. We think that you should perhaps, in the, in the beginning, after some discussion and consultation with you, uh, consider living building challenge because it's a different sort of process. It's a process that really involves uh, performance criteria as opposed to prescriptive criteria. Lead is very prescriptive. It's a series of points and you comply or, or you don't. You, pick, you cherry pick your points. Whereas uh, uh, the living building has 20 uh, prerequisites and there are different ways of achieving those. So it's a more interesting process but it's a, at a much higher level too. So we think that it might be something to consider in the beginning and it would be something that uh, we would discuss with you obviously uh, in our workshops. Yeah, we really have to emphasize that there's going to be a huge amount of discussion about this building. We can't and say any more now. We're, <laughs> our time is up. <laughs> We're All right. cut off. Here, okay. So. okay. Anyway, thank you very much for thank your time. Thank you. We really appreciate it. All right. So thank you to HCMA and Endel Elliott. Uh, so we have another quick break. Uh, no, everyone's getting a bit hungry.